I can't hear it. If, if it's okay. Saying and we are back after an what's the right word, Santo? An action-packed Sunday. Uh, uh, a glorious culmination of a season. Yes, yes, yes. And um, look, I gotta take care of some misconceptions from last week. That some things that I said that I were that were wrong, and also some things that have been going around the community. For example, um, a lot of people in the last two episodes of Michelle Gutense in the community, especially, there's been like a pseudo civil war going on, and also it's in terms of. I'm gonna ask you this one question, uh, uh, or Santo, and then I'm gonna. I'm just going to and I'm going to leave it out there because we're going to talk about the end of the episode. Why okay. are you guys holding Rudius to a standard that you don't hold your own friends, family to or even uh, regular humans? Well, ex I, ex explain the context of that question, because I'm not sure. So a mean. lot of people have been very mad. Well, like me, particularly like last week, if you watch last. Yeah, I know you saw mm -hmm. last week's episode. I was very highly critical of how they depicted it. Did they hit all the big moments? Yes. But okay. this is where my biggest criticism is like, if they had one more episode, I'd feel great. Like, just had one more episode, I'd feel great. But in terms of a lot of people are like, why Why did Rudy Why did Rudy cheat on his wife? Like, he should have been a man and handled that. He should have done this. He should have done that. Where I'm like, look, I'm not going to try and talk about anybody specifically, and I'm going to keep this very short. But you're holding Rudy to a standard you wouldn't even hold yourself to. And this is my biggest problem with Rudy. Like, for instance, Kobe's son in the BSS Discord. He mm -hmm. hates Rudy. But I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to... Look, you can hate whoever you hate, right? But, like, if you hate him after you get all the context, more power to you. I hate Bakugo. I'm never <laughs> hitting that, okay? I got all the context. I got everything. I still don't like him. But at least I, I'm talking about him from everything that I know. Like, and I think... People are just kind of being unfair. That's why you see me now bringing up Makima. Why y'all giving Rudius more smoke than Makima? <laughs> but we don't need to talk about it. We'll talk about that in the episode. But let's dive into this. Episode 24, Succession. The end of season two of Mushoku Tensei, Java's Reincarnation. Turning point three is Tengli. You can, say, you can technically say turning point three is Tengli officially complete. Right? Okay. Santo. There's a lot. There's a lot that happened this there's episode. A, there's a lot to unpack. There's, there's so much to unpack. Peak. This episodes like this is why I say Mushoku Tensei is so great. Episodes like this. But Santo, let me before I start glazing because I've been glazing. I even called Lonnie <laughs> to talk to him about it, um, even though he's bedridden. Talk about it, Santo. How did you feel about the episode? And I know you got a bone to pick one character in particular, so save that. Save that. We'll just talk <laughs> okay. about the episode itself. Okay, so the episode as a whole, that it made me really think about the the season in general. I would say this is my favorite season so far. Mm. Um, in terms of storytelling, character growth, character development. I mean, of course, all of the, you know, everything that anime aficionados say mm -hmm. these these words. But really and truly, Mushoku Tensei is really hitting it out of the park in every aspect, in world building, in just developing connections with every character. Ev literally every character is important. This season, this episode, all I can say is like, wow. Like, like honestly, just, just wow. Like from, from Rip seeing his... Rudius is concerned of, you know, I'm finally home. And then it just instantly goes like, oh, wait, man, God said this. And he goes home and like nobody's answering him. And he every time Rudius holds his chest, I feel I feel something. <laughs> like, he was in despair, distress, all, all the depression, whatever it may be, anxiety. And the glorious return of Sylphie. Now, nah, from now on, we call her Milfy around here. That's who we call it. Okay, the community has adopted it. The Reddit's talking about it. Her you want to talk about a tremendous, a tremendous design upgrade. Her redesign is is, oh. is fantastic. Like, like it's it's crazy how you know when characters get older, like it kind of removes the innocence of the character. 
Sylvie yeah. looks older. Like mm -hmm. she, she truly does. But she's like, you see her and you could like, that's still, that's still her. Like she's still innocent. She's still, you know, it's, it's almost like you can feel her character through the screen. It's, it's mm -hmm. warm. Like, I, I, I have to say that Sylphie's hug is like the best, the, the biggest power in Mushoku Tensei for this season. Like every embrace she does, like it just makes everything okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I won't get, I won't get further along because we, we like I said, there, like you said, there really is a lot to talk about in this episode, mm -hmm. but what a way to close the season like what like from the labyrinth to the pain of norn to the death of of a parent to finally having somewhat of a happy ending like the roller coaster of emotions that this season of Mushoku Tensei gave us mm -hmm. is why I personally say this in terms of storytelling, this is up there in anime. It truly, it, it really is like, aside from, you know, the, the tropes that we don't, we don't talk about, we don't mention, you know, mm -hmm. the problematic things, but storytelling wise, you cannot tell me that this isn't up there with the greats in anime. Fantastic season. Fantastic. I, I tried to tell them and, you know, slowly but surely I, I got them. I got people to start watching. I regard Mushoku Tense as my favorite story. Like, it's my favorite East guy. And, and I'm sorry. I know I have a starting five, but the first the first East guy that gets picked is Mushoku Tense. And they do slice of life moments better than slice of life anime do. They tackle serious moments. And a lot of people are so used to these moments, these kind of situations that Mushoku Tensei finds itself in. And like, it just kind of works out. You know what I mean? Like they always find the right answer. And Mushoku Tensei shows you sometimes there is no right answer at all, whether or not it's the big confrontation they have in the, in the kind of, as everybody's kind of sitting down talking about Paul and what's going on with that. Obviously what's going on with Roxy, Norn, Aisha, all these things like there's sometimes there's no right answer, you know, and mm -hmm. you just have to be okay with that. And that's why I asked that question beginning, Santa. Why are you guys holding Rudius to a standard that you don't even hold yourself to? With all the context that you've seen about Rudius's life, am I saying Rudius is perfect, Santo? I have no, never he's, said he's that. Not. He's definitely not. His sins are like his, especially his prior life sins, will should always be mentioned. They should always be mentioned because not just because that's a part of his story. It's because they're also horrible. They're horrible sins. But that's why when people look at the title of Mashoku Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation, it's literally the, in the title was like a, a, like a second chance at life in another world. Mm -hmm. And Mashoku Tensei embodies that Isekai aspect very well. Nobody's Isekai is all about, sometimes about overpowered characters, just the ability like, you know what? You ever just kind of like, just want to be a, like, what's the one that High Dive had with a guy who was just a farmer? Like it's all these, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, these things, and like Michelle Gutenze hits this hits this point where I'm sorry, I can't really find the only one I can find that's close is Re Zero. This kind of deep, introspective look at a character where you're looking at all his flaws and all his strengths, and a lot of times you're just focusing on his flaws. And look at the end of the season when Rudy walks over to Paul's grave with the drink. And he just tells him about his life. And for the first time, Rudy's like, I'm looking forward. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tired of looking back and reflecting on my mistakes. I have res I have even more responsibilities now. I'm a father. Paul, this must have been how you felt. This must have been how my parents felt in my past life. I'm looking forward. And it took this long just for him to get to, if you really think about it, the starting line of living the rest of his life right and i'm telling you guys and i'll say i'm gonna keep calling you out even though i love you kobe like you hate rudy but you've never told me a good reason why you hate him you've never told me a good reason why because like in terms of besides the obvious santa mm -hmm. besides the obvious where 
you know, the allegations. And I tell everybody who who talks to me about Mishoka Tensei, and I'm like, even the little debate Milani had in the in the telegram last night. I just don't see why keep the same energy with everyone. Keep the same energy with everyone. That's why I bring up Makimo, right? There's a list of people who've done mm -hmm. worse than Rudius, who they never get the smoke that he does. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, if you're gonna be that way, then keep the same energy with all of them. Because it's it's just it's it's just been an amazing season. The last three episodes alone, Santo, the last mm -hmm. three episodes alone have been the peakest of peaks. And let's just dive right on into it from Rudy running home because of the man God's warning or instructions or whatever you want to call it. He gets home. Everybody's there. We see Milfy. We call Mil we call her <laughs> Milfy from now on. We call her Milfy from now on because, hey, Studio Bind, I wasn't familiar with your game. That's peak character design right there. Mm -hmm. And then they go get Norn and Norn comes back and then they drop the news about Paul. Wait, but before, but before we... Be go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Santo. Before, before we get into all of that, mm -hmm. so the walk up to the house mm. like the ex the excitement literally the excitement of like okay i'm finally home i'm relieved and he runs and geese <laughs> says oh he must really miss his wife and, and then you see roxy's and face roxy's and you're like face, oh bro <laughs> i'm like why like why i I don't like him. I I I don't know what it is. Just it's just little things like that that he does that I really do not like this character at all. And he just like you didn't need to say that. Everybody's quiet. Talahan is just back there, just chilling, just walking. He's just chilling, bro. He just, he's, Everybody's yeah, just chilling. Yeah. No, he says something. Now Roxy's depressed again. And I'm like, come on, man. But the <laughs> the. And th and this is me. Like the use of sound in in this episode was really really well done in the beginning. Like the sound of Rudius's breath, like being like the loudest thing in the whole beginning segment of the episode. Like the quiet of like nobody call like nobody answering. And when Aisha opens the door, I'm like, okay, we're good. Mm -hmm. we're, we're okay like i'm like some some level of relief and then sylphie makes her glorious return by the way her hair mm. fantastic yeah but, like that was the first thing i was like oh here, here comes pregnant sylphie but her face her like she looks more mature she's like she seems almost regal like she's like the queen of the house like literally when when they showed her and rudy is just is everything okay? He's just like in despair. Mm -hmm. And Sylphie just gives him that hug. Like, welcome home. I was like, ah, ah, so, perfect, perfect writing. Perfect. I I look, look, it's it's it just shows you like and once I bring I keep bringing it up. Nothing that Mushoko Tensei does is without reason. And I know I'm I'm glazing, I know I'm glazing, but I'm serious, like I'm really serious. Like that moment from the hug. And then Aisha runs. Aisha literally ran to school to go get Norn. That's yeah. what she did. She <laughs> ran to school to go get Norn. Norn comes back. Everybody coming in. The whole everybody is there, right? And even notice, even the character who never said anything the whole episode, but that girl that you saw with Paul when they met in the first season, she mm -hmm. was distraught. You literally did not see her face until they left. Yeah, you did not see her face until they left because she was just that that distraught, and it was. Look, a big part of the first half of the episode, Santo was Norn. Like, in a lot of ways, you, you, I understand you, but let's, before we get to the hateful part, <laughs> just that session where she gets the news and she just breaks down. And it's one of those where, like, it hurts, man. It's that, it's that, it's that guttural. I don't know the right word to say it. And like, <laughs> Aisha comforts her. Um, Sophie comforts her. Lily is showing concern. Even even Zenith in her state's like, oh my god, you know. Even she's like caught up in it. And I, 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 I mean, I don't mean to. Go, I can't. Oh god, 
Aisha's we'll get so, there. We'll get she's there. so she's we'll, so we'll uh, get there. Anyways. We'll get there, right? So we do everything, he lays out Paul's effects, right? Uh Norn asks for his big ass sword. She mm-hmm. t- Rudy's like, go ahead. And then uh, and, uh another thing that you know is Rudy was reaching for Paul's armor, and Zenith's like, nah, nah, I got these are this. mine. <laughs> and shocking everybody because that's the first thing that that's Zenith first, has done yeah. autonomously this whole time. So it's just showing you that, that there's still a piece of Zenith in there, mm-hmm. right? And let me tell you this right now. Those, that's it. Rudy never takes them from her. They're always with Zenith from now in memoriam, right? And then and then uh, then they start talking about it. And, he, and uh, Rudy lets Norn know that Paul's dead. Uh, Norn starts crying, all that stuff. And then she's like, how could you let this happen? It's just one of those things where like, yeah, Rudy's fantastic you know he's smart he can really think on his feet he's powerful maybe one of the more powerful mages in the world in his own right but he's still human mm-hmm. and when she's about to lose her mind at him for letting i, I know she's about to blame paul, him for paul dying she yeah. looks at his arm and he, she's like oh okay i can't blame you because you clearly lost something as well right mm-hmm. and um she it's one of those moments where i'm like At that point, my Norn approval rating has never been higher. Never been higher. And immediately, immediately after everybody <laughs> leaves, it was like the presidential debate on Thursday. <laughs> and her approval rating shot right back uh, down. She trash. Right back down. But that's what makes Mushoku Tensei great because after everybody leaves, even Lilia and Zenith leave the leave the place, and there's this awkward silence, right? Where you see the, the sisters like looking around, like what's happening, and um, and, and he's and then Rudy just comes out and says it. Hey, <laughs> we got to talk. We got to talk. <laughs> he's he's like, they're, they're looking <laughs> around like, why is she not leaving? Yeah, um, why is she not <laughs> leaving? We, we got a conversation. Now. Yeah, and then and then she's just like. I want to have Roxy as my second wife. And you see the I love how I love how they didn't show Sophie's eyes, but they just showed mm-hmm. her reaction with her mouth. And then Norn just loses it. Loses let, it again. Hold, hold, hold on. Be, before, go ahead, Sato. Go ahead. Let, let you before, cook. Go ahead. Before, cook. before we get into <laughs> let's 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 rewind back just just a just a smidge. Just a smidge. Mm-hmm. I want I want everybody to like really look at this episode and watch Rudius just sit down as the head of like the whole thing. Like nobody's saying a word. Everybody's just waiting for Rudius to speak. And just just that alone, I was like, he rem- he kind of reminded me of Paul, mm-hmm. but just like on another level. Like people really really respect Rudius. Like nobody is saying anything until Rudius speaks. Like it's it's crazy, and when he mentions this to Norn, I get it. I completely one hundred percent understand the reaction, and I was literally about to give her like what you said the approval rating. In yeah, at least for me, because you know I hate Norn. I can't. Stand you're not a bit. You're not a fan. Of, you're not a fan of I, Norn. I am not. She she. <laughs> we can write her off. I'm I'm good. <laughs> but when she was about to f- like really go in on Rudius, and Rudius puts his head down, and she sees his arm, like the like Rudius, somebody carry that shirt to the laundry or something. Like he's just he he's just been wearing this thing, and she realizes like, oh, if you couldn't do it then I understand that nobody could. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? Okay, she finally gets it. She she finally gets it. Mm-hmm. That 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 moment with Zenith and the arms, I mean the the gauntlets. I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. Like she like even throughout all of that the bond she has with her husband like makes an appearance. Like everybody's like really distraught. My favorite part about all of that, not, I mean, 
Norn's character was very well written. Like her cry was like visceral. Oh was, my god, that act, was that crime. Her voice actress put in fantastic work. And like, they and 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 it was for a while. Like mm -hmm. it, like I, I was like, oh man, they're really letting her go. Because mm -hmm. I, I, at one point, I was like, can somebody like give her a hug or something? Like, because she's she's going, mm -hmm. and then she she calms down or whatnot. But it might be my bias, but it was to me Aisha's breakdown was was more impactful than that because she's been holding it together this whole time. She's comforting Norn, everything. And when Norn tells her, hey, it's okay, because she notices, like, her sister isn't responding. She hasn't said a word, nothing. And she holds her mom and just starts crying because she also lost her dad. Mm -hmm. But finally seeing her mom be okay. And she she just let, I was like, this this is why this show is amazing. And then we get 20 seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> and Norn stocks just plummet for me. Like like free fall, like in a recession. <laughs> like it was, it was I look, I get it. I absolutely get it. And but let's just you know what not before we dive before I dive into it. Go ahead, Santo, because this whole conversation, it's it's very realistic. That's what this conversation is very realistic the nerve of this young trick the the, the absolute <laughs> nerve how could you mm. sylphie's been here she's been worried about you whatnot well i've been trying to save dad well, and yes. losing my arm yes. at the same time to come back and and remember like it was how long was it going to take before they figured out how to get um, to the teleport circles? It was going to be. It was supposed years. to be gone for at least two years. At so least I'm, two. So I'm not only going over there to risk my life. No, now I'm rushing to bring dad back home because you're sentimental and you're crying and nah. And I get home and I had a moment. It was a slip up. I love this woman. Your dad did the same thing, but you don't. I, I, in the words of you just used just a while ago, keep the same energy. Mm -hmm. Keep the same energy. You don't have any issues with your dad doing it. Your sister's right there, who is your half sister, and you love her one hundred percent. The nerve of this girl, like the, the absolute nerve. I can't stand her. Like I wish. Aisha would have just like slapped her. Like, it's, like, it, like, literally. It's the hypocrisy of it. That's, we've all seen this before. We've all seen the guy who's super religious and he dares to talk bad about somebody. Oh, well, you're not living your life right by the Bible, or blah, 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 this and that. I'm not trying to talk bad about anybody's religion, right? Mm -hmm. Because Millis in Michelle Tensei is basically Christianity in our world. And for her to feel that it's not just her, Zenith is also very, um what do you call it very a uh, millis she's very religious she, right? she's she's de she's devoted she's mm -hmm. really she's devoted. Very devoted as well and one thing they took out of the uh, anime which would have been which they which they didn't add into the anime was when um rudy tells um zenith oh when rudy tells uh sylphie about roxy they didn't leave zenith was there they lilia and zenith were there and zenith okay. actually slaps rudy she slaps him. Oh. Yeah. Which showing you just a little bit more of what Zenith is okay. about, right? Mm -hmm. But if even in both those cases, it just highlights the hypocrisy of it, right? And for Norn, you just saw that his arm is cut. The blood's still on his sleeve. And for you to just straight up say, you must have had a great time over there. For Sophie would have done it. Like, like if she was like, Sophie would have done it if she was there. But she wasn't there. She wasn't she, there. She wasn't. And, she wasn't there. And this, and this is, I mean, and I, I don't know if she understand the, she, cause she doesn't, I, I'll give her that. She doesn't she's, understand she's, she's the like concept. 14. She's like 14. She, she, she doesn't, doesn't know, know the, the, the admiration and the feelings that he has for rocks. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. But one thing she knows that he doesn't practice. 
Mm-hmm. And to throw that in his face after he just cremated his dad, made sure all of his effects were there, and literally lost an arm trying to say, and I just brought, I just brought mom home. I brought mom home. You to do- I brought your stepmom home. Like, 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 I, it wasn't like, it wasn't like I fully failed. Like I just came back by myself. You know what I mean? And, 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 and just it, it, what makes that entire situation so crazy or, or so great is her hypocrisy is on full display and she's the only one that refuses to see it. Like R- Rudy, Rudy's not going to call her out because he's like, no, I want you to, re-, even when she had starts attacking Roxy and Roxy just takes it. She just mm-hmm. takes it, which shows, which shows why Rudy holds her in such high regard. Because yeah, if we're looking at the anime continuity now, Roxy was wrong. Mm-hmm. She was wrong for what she did. That yeah, is she, not. She, she stated. She even stated it when Sylvie was having that conversation with her. I had uh, ulterior motives. Mm-hmm. Like she, she's, she understands her fault in that whole thing. But this stupid, spoiled child isn't trying to hear anything but my my whole thing with that interaction is Aisha's silence Mm -hmm. like Aisha doesn't has doesn't have to be convinced because she has a level of understanding of one of her dad Mm -hmm. like her dad literally did the same thing with Norn's mom and she doesn't blame him. She has a level of understanding. But no- Noin is literally that stupid spoiled kid. And I I, I cannot. It, it 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 grinds my gears, bro. It, it, I got it, you. It really I got does. you. Noin is a very, um, she goes through a lot of ups and downs in the story. I think in the end, a lot of people like her character, right? In terms of, you know, what she kind of accomplishes in the story and how she's kind of depicted. Um, but I think that's how Norn is always supposed to be. She's she's your really like if you're talking about a friend, she's like that one really religious friend, man. Like, yeah, you know, she's cool. But like, like, for instance, one thing that the anime always leaves out with Cliff is how much he actually just pre- preaches Millis all the time. Like mm-hmm. they'll be they'll be talking about the dolls with Xanobur. And he's like, let's do it in the Millis when they'll start his sermon. And like <laughs> he's always preaching it. Right. But that won't work in the anime because. They're not gonna show it. It just wouldn't, mm-hmm. it just it's just not gonna fit well, but he's always doing it. But also, like when Cliff is like Cliff even being with Alina Lies should show Norn because Norn knows about it. Mm-hmm. That that there is there is either room for flexibility or you can understand, you can understand it a lot better because let's be let's keep it a stack. The fact that Alina Lies and 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 Cliff are together is even especially compared to like how people act in our world it's crazy i'm sorry that's like the son of the pope is getting with one of the one of the biggest adult film actresses and mm-hmm. they just have a fantastic relationship that's yeah. basically what it is but i was very frustrated and i think she's just so hurt right by paul's death and everything that's happening she just lashed out and she used her religious beliefs to do that. And look, Norn, I, I, I think after this episode, a lot of people are really not going to like, a lot of anime owners are really not going to like Norn until further notice. And I completely understand. And 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 it's always going to be that way. But when, like like you said, when Aisha realizes it, when Sophie realizes it, and the one thing they also took out of the, out of the they should have added anime was how uh, Sophie shuts Norn up. Because Sophie gets it. And that even that conversation that she has with Roxy, like, look, man, Rudy talks about you all the time. You're mm-hmm. the only maid she respects. Which, by the way, it's kind of fucked up because she's also a maid. She's also, yeah. she's also a mage. <laughs> game game recognizes game, man. Yeah, and, and, it, and it went for, for Sophie to just break us, Roxy down. Like, you're just a regular girl like me. I used to be very jealous, but I'm not anymore, you know? And this and that. And, and look, the one thing I hate about anime is harm. It's harms. Most mm-hmm. most of them okay. are completely unearned. Sometimes they're dumb. And like, look, author, just pick a girl, and it's okay. And even when I first felt this, I was pissed. Like I, 
when I first read it, Santo, when I told you I was pissed, because I'm like, you're taking the easy way out, if that's what it felt like. But this harem is earned. It's mm -hmm. absolutely earned. This, this, these two have have earned. Like you know how much they both mean to Rudy. He literally cannot live without them. And 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 let's let's keep it a stack. If it all plays out the way Roxy wanted to, Roxy was just going to disappear. You will net Rudy yeah. will never see her again. But Rudy pulled her in. Sophie, uh, Sylvie pulled her in. Aisha pulled her in, and eventually, Norn pulls her in. Like, like Norn, because it's just crazy that like she's just so mad. And and one thing I want you to know, like the last episode takes place over like several months because Sophie has to give birth, right? Mm -hmm. Sophie has several months, and I tell you, Norn was mad for months, man. She was pissed. She was pissed, and eventually, like somebody just like Sophie does it, and someone's like, "Are you? Are you?" Would you say this to Lilia? Would you say this to your dad? Would you say this to Aisha? And then, and then, like, it's just like, oh, it just, oh, and like the whole time, Aisha just been like, yeah, you know, she just doesn't speak. You know, she thinks, yeah. she th she doesn't think before she speaks. And then, like, and then they're back to being like this great like dynamic that they have. They're just like, kids. It's it's so uh, it it just bothered one. It bothered me because. I, I I do have a Christian faith and whatnot. And to see somebody weaponize that mm -hmm. faith into or, or faith in anything against the person like that, that that's a complete like turnoff for me. So it it already it it already made a character that I hate just loathe. I I couldn't stand it to the point that I'm glad that it in the anime like i said i'm i'm anime only on this one mm -hmm. but when sylphie said hey remember rudius doesn't practice millis like she she literally just like when you check somebody in a soft toned voice mm -hmm. like she literally did the the kendrick versus drake you're moving like a degenerate right now like calm down like he doesn't practice it and i'm okay but I will say one moment that really like it's it's such a small moment that really like got me like mm -hmm. it's it's the Mushoku Tensei does a thing that it's just a lot of like the small little moments have such impact like Norn is literally tearing Roxy a new one and she can't say anything and she's walking away Sylvie catches her and the and just the tears in Roxy's like I'm mad I'm sad. Oh, I'm going to, the love of my life, I'm, oh, this is not happening. Like, all of those emotions are happening in that, just that one, two second clip, like, frame of just Roxy crying. And when Sylphie says, it's okay. Like, we're the same. And the light that just beams on Sylphie, I'm like, this is how you do it. This is how you do an episode. This is how you catch the emotion, not only with the character, not only with the dialogue, but even the scenery, for God's sakes. Like, mm -hmm. th they know what they're doing. Norn, you suck. You're trash. You, it is what it is. Like, we, I, I'm not even going to get into it because if I, if I raise my voice or if I start cursing and whatnot, my kids are right over there and I can't really get into it. But Norn is trash. Aisha's the goat. Look, I've always been a big fan of of Aisha when it, when you compare the two. I respect Norn because, look, she's willing to stand on her. She's willing to stand on her belief. She really loves her dad, and realistically, we meet her. We are introduced to her through like one of the worst types of misunderstandings, right? Mm -hmm. Like she just walks in and Rudy's beating the fuck out of his dad, <laughs> and it's like I and and I'm like Norn, I get it. You know, we want to be like no Norn, like. Like you, like you're being unfair, but you weren't there a minute ago when your dad was legitimately attacking Rudy because Rudy didn't want to tell him all the crazy shit he did just to get there. Because guess what? Hey, Paul, you're still my dad. I don't want to worry you about all the stuff that I've done that mm -hmm. legitimately no 12 year old or whatever, 13, whatever he was at the time should have been doing, even if I had a guardian. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Her whole character like this moment, you know, at, at some points, even Santa for a second, you were like, you know what? I kind of like the word when, when she was in her little. She had um, one moment. She had one moment of hope, squandered yeah, she, it, fumbled, when, 
<laughs> no, when she was in a little hikimori face, and then Rudy pulled up and said, "Nah, man, we got this," you know. Mm-hmm. So it, it 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 was such a what a what a fantastic what a fantastic episode. Oh, and we're not even done with the episode yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, we, then then we go then we go to um she doesn't really talk um without thinking and you know they get into it whatnot then the conversation with his dad is great like the conversation paul always wanted to have with rudy is Mm -hmm. oh and by the way i mean let's let's just i'm just rewinding a little bit when rudy tells norn about the sword and Mm -hmm. everything it means just the words of paul like and i teared up a little bit I, I, i was like he would be proud like bring it like that's episode like three that's no episode three of the show when he turns five and and paul gives him his sword gives him that sword i was like oh my god even lilia and when you saw lilia's face oh like she she caught like she caught it like she she she's like oh like he like he listened like he, he still he still holds those those words true and and for us the the fourth wall is rudius isn't really his son but those words impacted him so much that now like you said now he can move forward that conversation at the grave is so impactful like hey this is what you must have felt like it was literally everything that Paul wanted to talk to Rudius the entire time. He finally gets to have it. And he just leaves the drink right there. And it's like, it's okay. I'm going to continue your, literally, your legacy. I am finally owning up to, I'm your son. Like, you are my dad. Like, it's... It's so well done. It is is literally so well done. So obviously, um, so I'm gonna add say, I'm gonna say this because it's not it's a spoiler, but it's not really a spoiler. So during big moments of Rudy's life, he always goes to Paul's grave. He always okay. just does. So and he always leaves a drink because you know Paul, you know Paul, a little bit of a drinker, <laughs> you know. He, yeah, he, he liked to have a good time, and I really like that. And there are times where in the story, well, you know, like he said, I'll bring my family, my whole family next time. There are times mm-hmm. he just goes with Sophie. There are times he just goes with Roxy. Like there are times, obviously, there are times he goes by himself. That I really like that it keeps Paul in the story without you know having him be there. Um, <clears throat> and um, we get this little rundown of like all the other characters. You know, we see Zanoba, Ginger, and Julie. Mm-hmm. We see the two Beast girls. We see Cliff and the Little Eyes. Possibly after some coitus, because the, go- the goat. And and by the way, <laughs> in in the Discord. Mm-hmm. Kobe, we are not going to have any Cliff slander. Cliff is goaded. He's one of the best characters in this damn show. You can hold that. <laughs> I digress. Go ahead. No, no, no. I, I got you. I got you. You know, so and then we got one character. One care. We got one. I've, she got like three seconds, which is confirmed. I, fa- I hit Go that cr- I hit that crunchy roll skip. <laughs> I skipped it. <laughs> Her hair was starting, like, I saw red hair flowing. I skipped it. <laughs> you know, we just got to see Eris is back, which confirms our theory that she's going to get her own OVA again, which I'm perfectly okay with. I'm not. Um, Look, she's <laughs> but that's she, she, she's important, <laughs> Santo. But, you know, she's going to get her own OVA, kind of telling us what she's been doing since she left Rudy. Um, Santo, remind me before we before we step off, I need to send you the, the manga that they did uh, about what she's been doing. Okay since she left um it's not the best but it's like the simplest way because other than that i'm like go read this go read these chapters and i don't want to do that to you so um it was it was a great way to end it and then that that final shot because you know the 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 lights the stars Mm -hmm. are out and everybody's looking at them right and then you see norn and aisha running like come on come on come on we gotta go outside (laughs) and like the whole family comes outside and this is it reminded me of uh, one of the shots from um, the Mushoku Tensei light novel cover. They always okay. do, every periodically, they do like a family portrait, right? Okay. And that was like the anime's version of it, where you watch them all stand there. It's ending, right? The show's ending, and they're all just looking up at the stars. Fantastic way to end it. 
as it feels like, okay, you know, we made it through turning point three. Santo, when turning point four comes, bro, you're going to be scared. You're going to be so scared, Santo. <laughs> turning point, like, you're going to be so scared. But I can only say there's only two more left. There's only two more turning points left. Okay. Right? I, w I will say that I that fi that final shot with, like, we were so we're talking about the family portrait shot mm -hmm. that they have. Mm -hmm. By the way, animation on this, in this end credit mono whatever you want to call it. it to me i i said it was better than the fight scenes like mm. it was it's great and i love the um, i'm big i'm big on on tone emotion feeling from mm. a shot after paul dies that end credit scene it hurts because mm. It's like, oh, we're 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 coming to get all the family around, and we're all gonna be sitting next to the to the fire and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But Paul dies, and I'm like, every time I see it, we're like, Paul's not there. But now, after that that conversation at the grave, you get that sense of closure. Like, yes, it's still tragic, but we acknowledge it we're grown we're moving forward and now we have the family portrait and little lucy is there and everybody's smiling i'm like finally like a happy ending type thing because like you guys at like, the season <laughs> one rudy was legitimately crying after eris left him and fell guys 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 let me say this one more time. Let me say this. You know what? Let me say this one more time. I need y'all to look me in my eyes. Mushoku Tensei did something that no other anime has ever done. And I'm not saying this to be facetious. They used erectile dysfunction as a fantastic plot device. And it worked perfectly. To the point, Santo, I, every time I watch Mushoku Tensei, I think about Sarah. I think about Sarah. Every single time, because if I, I'm sorry, Sarah should be there. She should be there. She should be there. She should. She should. It was just like Sarah met Rudy at the worst time in the wrong place with the worst misunderstandings. And especially in the anime, she never had a chance mm -mm. to make up for it. So, look. There's. Sato, I I, I want to glaze, glaze. I want to glaze, glaze. But you're right. A happy ending for season two. There's, oh my god. I, there's so much. There's so much. There's so much we gotta talk about. But go ahead, Santo. Go ahead. No, like just. I, mean, I can't. I can't stand Iris, man. I got. Oh, she she broke my. She broke his. She heart. broke him. She broke his heart. She broke his heart. <laughs> she broke his other heart. Like, and it's one of those where like. A lot of people like I, when I, I've talked to a few of my friends, where they were like, "What? what what's the matter? Like, he's just a girl. She left. It's like so she left. No. Like th that's not what it was. No, you, you don't watch all of season one, basically from when they meet onwards, and say she was just a girl. You don't. He he genuinely loves her, and we already Love know that her. he's a perv. But he makes a promise. And tells her, we're not doing anything. He upholds his promise multiple times. He could have done it multiple times. He could have done it like random stuff. And he holds out. Developing his feelings for her. Everything. And they get to that damn tent. And he says no. Because I have. I, I want, I, this is real. What I feel is real. And she legit takes advantage of him. She tells him the one thing <laughs> that'll just make, I mean, it sounds childish, but she tells him that line. And he just, all right, let's go. I guess we're both, we both really want this. We both care about each other. We both love each other. Next morning, he is happy. He is ecstatic. The first thing he wants to see is her. 
and she's gone. All he has left is her hair and a note. And, and a stupid note. Like and, and and everybody's like, oh no, he he misunderstood what she meant. I'm like, no, you you can't leave. That's why that moment with Sylphie is so important. That's why it's so impactful. Because the look that you see in Mishoko tells it again, it's the little things. That look that you see Rudius has, and he holds his chest. And he's just looking around. His breathing is getting heavy. And Sylphie opens that door. And the way he hugs Sylphie is like, thank God you're here. Because if you weren't, I don't know what I would do to myself. Mm -hmm. Because I can't go through that pain again. That's why I, I will never forgive she who shall not be named. <laughs> and I'm so glad that this season gave us a happy ending. Because I couldn't deal with another tragic ending like that. So bravo. The the family portrait shot is fantastic. And that logo reveal. Let's talk about that. Mm. I was like, the animation's great. Everything they're saying something in in what is it, Japanese or whatnot, yes. and I and they're not subtitling anything. And they I'm don't like, care. You, <laughs> I'm not telling like, you what you want to know, Santo. <laughs> Season three's coming, and I that's all they told and, you. And I do not know what they said. And that that next line came out. I'm like, okay, I'm here for it. Now, don't make me wait years for this. <laughs> but I that that was, it's such a it was such a good logo reveal. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was. It's great. It, it was just fantastic. So, look, Studio Bind is, uh, they only have two projects that I know of that they're working on, which they both, obviously, Mushoku Tensei is what the studio was literally created was to make Mushoku Tensei, right? Mm -hmm. But they also made one that came out this year, a Young Tamer's Guy Journey to Pick Up Trash or something. It was, it was basically like, it, it's, a, it's a weird name. It's based about a little girl who's a beast tamer. And she, okay. and she, she, her first monster is like a slime, and then they, like her, her, her like her, like uh, life is really messed up, like okay. really messed up. And then she kind of slowly, there's, there's nothing weird about it. It's just like she slowly kind of mm. gets her self worth and blah blah blah. It's a really good story, right? It's a really good story. And those are the only two uh, projects that I know that they're working on. And look, I've been really impressed. I, I've obviously had my concerns. Santo, you, you've you've heard me. I've had my concerns about some animation quality, but once it, once it was time to lock in Santo, they locked the fuck in. Mm -hmm. Like, and and the, the fight scenes were great. Like, and especially, I was really impressed. This is a very young studio. This is a very young studio, and they were able to accomplish things that I think a lot of we've seen a lot of older studios really fail at. Right? I like, for instance, obviously, the Hydra. Would, would a lot of people like I still wish it was hand drawn? I'm like, I'm sorry. Do you know how hard that is? Like you yeah. photo boys using CGI, they're just better at it than everybody else. And the they're, CGI was great. It was great. It, was, it, was, it wasn't bad at it all. It wasn't bad at all. It was great. The fights are great. Even showing um the dichotomy of, of the party when they're fighting the Hydra. Like the fact that nobody was just kind of standing, everybody was mm -hmm. moving, like, oh, a part uh, somebody got hurt. Roxy's hauling to <laughs> Roxy, heal that Roxy, Roxy was in a marathon at that. I, point. Like she was moving, and 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 for them to finish off this way, this wasn't just obviously Michelle Tense is great. I think this is also a really big triumph for Studio Bind, and I'm curious to um, see because I'm probably going to take a couple years. I think for them to kind of because I, I'm I don't know. If they do two cores again, they'll they can probably get to where I'm thinking, which I'll tell you off the podcast, um, okay. off the recording where I think they're gonna get. But I think they might they might need more episodes again. They're gonna hit that problem. And I understand what Freerin did getting 31 episodes is crazy, but Mishoko Tense might legitimately need that kind that many episodes to kind of get what they want, especially if they want to adapt turning point four the way I think they will. They're gonna one of the best fights in the series is next season. Okay. One of that's the way I'll say it. One of the best fights in the series is next season. And if they're gonna if they're gonna do it the way I think, Santo, me and you are gonna come up on BSS in two years and be like, guys, 
I know I'm, we never really mentioned Mushoku Tensei in terms of best fights, but I'm not saying it's up there with Tengen Gyutaro. But I'm like, you guys should go watch this fight, and I'm telling you, you guys will be very impressed. So I'm 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 very excited. But Santo, it's time to dispel some misinformation, and let's go back to the question that I asked at the start of this of the recording, guys. Why are you holding Rudy is to a standard that you don't even hold yourself to or you don't hold your family to or you don't hold your parents to or you don't hold your friends to? The last three episodes, as great as they've been, they've generated a lot of controversy, Santo, in terms of what Roxy did, right? What Rudy did. And I think I feel like some people are going to be really mad at Sophie or a.k.a. Milfy <laughs> this season. But this episode, because of her choice to accept Roxy, right? Look. Everybody says, well, he, he he's a man. He shouldn't have done this. He made a promise, blah, blah, blah. Like people don't cheat on their, people cheat on their significant others for mm -hmm. less. Guys, add the context of what just happened. Rudy just saw his father die, die. And what, in a weird way, haunted Rudy was the fact that Paul legitimately last moment on earth was like that, that soft sigh, smile where he's like, thank God you're okay. Mm -hmm. And then he died. They all walked back. And I said that he didn't eat for a month. It was actually more like a couple weeks. That's why when you saw that episode, how, how skinny he looked. He looked very thin because all he was doing was drinking water. That's all he was doing he was barely drinking water. And Roxy doing what she did was she basically took advantage of Rudy to get him to be better, which has been proven by psychiatrists as a form to kind of help somebody get over traumatic situations is it the best no 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 no. let's keep it a stack no it's not but there are no psychiatrists in the mushoku tensei world what that situation came up in the, in the light novel was i blamed the lies a lot because she and geese were she geese talhan and, and roxy were completely worried about rudy because he's not eating he's barely drinking water and they're worried that he's going to die and guys let me keep it a stack the way rudy was going he was going to die in that room in la Pan. He wasn't, he was not taking care of himself at all. So they come up and Geese was like, is like, Ellen lies, you've been around for a while. What, what do we do to kind of help them? And then uh, Ellen lies was like, we just need to get him out of this funk somehow. And they chose the best method that they knew. They chose the best mm -hmm. method that they knew. Nobody said the method was right. Nobody said that at all. It's just the best method that they knew. And like I said, Roxy goes, does what she does. And in order to seal it, because at that point, Illinois is not dumb. She sees how Rudy feels about Roxy, right? And also, she knows how Rudy feels about Roxy from an admiration standpoint. But now it's different. He loves her. And Illinois tricks Rudy by saying, Roxy's two months pregnant. Like, you got to marry her, even though that was false, right? Because that was the push mm -hmm. that Rudy needed to fully seal. Because Roxy was fully prepared. Like I said, she was going to disappear to get him home. And then she just disappears. He never hears from her again. And for them to say, oh, he should have been a man. He should have done this. He should have done that. A lot of y'all talking like y'all know y'all knew what to do when your parents died. Or y'all been in that exact situation, especially a traumatic death like that. And I think you guys are really being unfair. You guys are really being unfair about what you would do when you, when I wager that the majority of people who, who have ever been in that situation, oh, majority of people reacting like that to, to Michelle Tensei have never been in that situation at all. You don't know. And that was just the best way that they do that, that they knew to handle the situation that Rudy was in. And guess what? It worked. It worked. He literally made it back home to go see his family. And then that situation happened the way it did. Was it right? But Sylphie knows. Sophie, if Sophie never heard of Roxy before, Sophie would be like, no. But Sophie knows because Rudy talks about Roxy the way uh, Cliff talks about Millis. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. So, and this this is from, from my perspective. Um, was it right? Who's, who's to say? Who's to say what's right or wrong in that in that situation, that scenario, whatnot? What, what's so he's he's married, understood? Did he promise that he was going to be faithful? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Um, in that point, a person, male or female, 
your head's not in the right space. Um, your ability to make sound decisions might not be working at an efficient level. Um, does Roxy take advantage of him? I would personally say no. Mm. Because does she have self-interest in the situation? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I genuinely, from what, and again, I'm anime only. Mm -hmm. From what was shown in the anime, Roxy says she has ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. I think she's saying that to... I don't think she's being 100% genuine with that. Does she like him? Sure. Does she want to be with him? Yes. But in that situation, was it for Roxy or was it for Rudius? No, I think it was a 100% for Rudius. Um, should Rudius have made that call and, you know, um, accept all of the advances that she made? Who's to say? Because it's a different culture. It's a different time. They don't practice millis. The polygamy is a, is something that, you know, he his household is is that way. So who's who's to say that was Paul right? Was I mean Paul? Pa, I would say Paul was more wrong than Rudius. I agree because Paul actively knew what he was doing. Zenith wasn't for it or whatnot. Roxy was genuinely trying to help him. After, like, like you guys talk about, you know, the light novels and whatnot, and the advice that she gets from Geese and Linda Lies. Roxy is just trying to pretty much help in any way that she can mm -hmm. to get the person that she loves and cares about to get out of this funk. Because even how they drew Rudius, his face and all of the dark outlines just showing the is like literally his cheeks are like sinking into his face. A lot of people didn't didn't they notice didn't that it. at all. They showed you a whole episode of it and they didn't catch it. Like, like a lot of people did it, and that really bothered me. So um I'm just telling you guys like you guys got you guys got to pay attention man. Like I said nothing Michelle Tensei does is without a reason. But sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. Sasha. No, no, you're you're good to to where his face is literally caving in his neck he like like the way they like go back and rewatch that episode and pause it and watch how he's drawn. Mm -hmm. She's generally trying to help him because, like you said, and I I agree, he he would have locked his door. He, Rudius was never coming out of that room. Mm -hmm. And because is it immoral? Sure. Mm -hmm. Is it right? I don't think there's a right or wrong answer there like everybody's entitled to their opinion sure but to completely write off oh he's you know he should have you know kept his promise and whatnot at that point he he didn't even want to live so he's not even thinking about a promise to Sylvie. like he wasn't even thinking about going home to his kid like he was literally going to be a shut in a, again and go back through that existing trauma that he had. Does Roxy save him? 100% she did. Mm -hmm. By any means necessary. And the entire time that she's saying, oh, you know what? It, I did it for me. I did it for that. It's just so it doesn't weigh down on Rudius. Because Rudius would have blamed himself. He would have, you know, he would have taken another load. And everything that she just did would have been for nothing because it wouldn't have removed any of the baggage that he was already carrying. So that's why I'm saying, I don't think she took advantage of him. She mm. literally did everything that she could to remove any bag, emotional baggage on Rubius. And like you said, and I completely agree, men and women have done worse things or less like how many times that we've seen somebody go through a loss and they go smash a bunch of chicks just to get over the pain and whatnot like yeah like is it, is it's it not, right? nobody, yeah nobody's is, saying it's right nobody's saying it's right at all and Mushoku Tensei shows you that it's not right because the, there were immediate consequences Norn's Norn losing her shit at Rudy was a consequence mm -hmm. it was was it right Santo no mm -hmm. 
No, especially when you're looking at Norn and how hi hypocritical she is, but it's a consequence. They were like, for instance, if let's just say if it wasn't Sophie, if it was Sarah, let's just say it was Sarah, Sophie didn't exist. Sarah's not letting you, Sarah's not doing that. Sarah's no. not. From what we know about Sarah, she's not. Oh, and, and one, one thing that, that a lot of people will not notice or might not even give it a second thought, what Rudy has did when he was telling to Sylvia and how he apologized, as, as somebody who practices Christianity or even just religion in, in general, mm -hmm. the way he bowed and the way he put his forehead to the ground is, the, is, is regarded as the most utmost posture of humbleness. Mm -hmm. Like complete and like killing your entire pride. And that's why I, I was saying that it's so impactful seeing him go from sitting down, everybody respects him. The guy that everybody's looking forward to, like save my dad, do this. You are the wise one. You are literally, he's Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. He's the one. Everybody acknowledges Rudius as being the guy. Don't let Lonnie hear this. He's going to be mad. But it's he, the truth. It's 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 true. Everybody holds it. He's the head of the table. <laughs> Everybody's like really looking to for his his direction, his his words of encouragement, of advice, of whatever. Like everybody holds Rudius to that regard. And he looks at Sylvie. He's not looking at anybody else. And he postures himself in stripped down. I am the most vulnerable I've ever been. And he accept any fate that she says. If she doesn't accept him, if she leaves or whatnot, he is completely face on the ground. Like, like he, he understands. Like, this is the character that he is. Like, he understands that it might have not been the best decision. Was it right or wrong? I'm not going to say it's right or wrong. There was, it just happened. It just, sometimes things just happen. Mm -hmm. And he was will, literally, he's there willing to accept any consequence. Mm -hmm. And Sylvie saw that. Sylvie saw that Roxy did what she, even Sylvie would have said. I would have done the same thing. So is Sylvie wrong? That would 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 that mean Sylvie would have taken advantage of him? No. Like the we we really I I get it. I it's to the point that I get it. Mm -hmm. Some people I'm not saying Rudius is redeemable. I don't think I don't think you can ever say he's redeemable. I don't I, I wouldn't say he's redeemable, but to say that what he did was wrong. How could you say that? Because I mean, there is no right or wrong answer, right? In the in that scenario, mm -hmm. that's that's my take on it. I mean, well, I'm just saying, why y'all giving Rudy's all this smoke? Like the dude from Re Redo of a Healer isn't walking around. Like Makima isn't walking around. Like I'm always gonna bring that up because I think it's unfair. I think it's the unfair, especially if you read if you read or watched the anime to mm -hmm. to its completion. You know everything that happened. I think that's unfair. I think. And this is what we, we were talking in the telegram. I think there's a difference between Redo, Redo of a Healer and Mishoku Tensei. Mm -hmm. Redo of a Healer, like the premise of that is, the premise of the entire story is those tropes. Mm -hmm. Mishoku Tensei has themes that go that way. But it's not the primary focus of the story. Redo of a healer is that. So that's why it there, there's a difference. I don't like I like I told you guys, I don't think the energy the energy should be kept the same because it's two different completely different things. I like something like you brought up Game of Thrones, same concept. Like these are things, these are themes and stuff that happened during those times. It's two different things because game of thrones that's not the primary focus that's not the main theme of the show um redo of a healer that is that is what you're going to see you are here for that mishoku tensei is the same like game of thrones it has problematic tropes and i don't think it should be held to that 
it's to I don't think the energy is the same. I I agree. Not my only thing is like, look, when, when we were talking with Lonnie in the Telegram, I was like, look, man, Lonnie, we did a whole video with Santo where we talked about the problematic things. Like, admittedly, they're going to keep Mushoku Tensei in at least in, for the casuals from that top spot in East Guy, like, um, mm -hmm. what do you call it? the time I was ringing line. It's just going to keep it out because some people, a lot of people just can't handle that stuff. But I'm just like, Lonnie, I've never heard you give the smoke for George R.R. R. Martin like you did for. Jo uh, Michelle Tensei's author, and that's okay. I'm just saying, just keep the energy the same. But uh, obviously, I'm 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 I'm, at, I'm just saying mm -hmm. that's all. That's how I always wanted to be. Like just just keep the energy the same because what I was saying with Lonnie, I agree with everything that Lonnie said. But we mm -hmm. we are never gonna make a vi an hour and a half video attacking Game of Thrones. We're never gonna do it because guess what? We all like it. We all like well the majority of it, right? Mm -hmm. We don't talk yeah. about the OG Game of Thrones past. <laughs> My thing past Red Wedding, it's cooked. That's me. Pat's red wedding is cooked, but we're never gonna talk about it like that. And and I'm just saying, like, and I've always and I've always told Lonnie that I'm like, if you're gonna attack Michelle Tensei for that, I need you to attack Game of Thrones for that. And even okay. the people who call, well, Rudius is like technically Rudy if you had both their ages, he's like 50 something. I was like, then every reincarnated dude is a pedo, every single one of them. That that's that, that's always been my thing. Like every isekai is that. <laughs> every isekai is that, every if, single if, one, like so. You can, so if that's the case, if we're being realistic, if we are, if this is what we are doing, mm -hmm. sure. So every isekai can have a love interest. They can't. They they can't. They can't. Because <laughs> I'm like you're being unfair. Because like the few people who've thrown that at me, and I'm like, do you really want me to call Lonnie in here? So you're telling me Gray from uh, the beginning at the end, he's a pedo. That's what you're telling me. Yeah. And they're like, no, no. Yes, he is. Yes, he why, is. And and then it's why not? Why not? <laughs> no, it's the same, it's the same thing. Maybe one doesn't go as far as the other. Sure. So are, are there levels to to exactly like, like, like and that's why I like, that's why I say I... like yo, this is a very slippery slope. That if you start throwing these allegations out, it's a very slippery slope. Like obviously, I always bring that up with Raftalia and now for me, right? Okay, like it's a very slippery slope. So my only thing is even even like, well, he groomed Sophie. No, he didn't. He literally didn't see her for years. He didn't see her for almost a decade. So he didn't do that. What about the stuff with Sophie? Er uh, what, what about the stuff with Eris? Every time he did something, Eris beat the piss out of him. Mm -hmm. Every single time. Like, I, I, like, and then even his, even his past life since, he literally died. He died for it. He was kicked out of his house and died. So, like, every time they think Rudy hasn't paid for it in the story, he has. It's the same way, like, when Ty says Bakugo, like, well, Bakugo is this, Bakugo is that. Ty's, Ty, and I agree with Ty, he's paid for it in the story. Like, Bakugo continually pays for it in the story until he finally learns that my way of doing this is not working. Until he finally mm -hmm. learns it. So, I'm just like, this is why I sit there when I hear see, hear people, I'm like, okay, I didn't read the story. It's okay. You didn't read the story. You didn't watch the anime. You You, you didn't see it. You just saw... Your one thing, which is the thing that bothers us about all these, like the guy who reads the headline and then all of a sudden starts attacking somebody. When I'm like, read the goddamn story. Read the goddamn story first before yeah. you start attacking people. So it's been it's been very interesting uh, seeing the kind of the talk around this because now everybody's kind of coming together because last week, Santa, when I told you that the, it was a light novels versus anime only fight over what happened mm -hmm. last week, now people are like, all right, we see why they did. Even though I still think um, geese and the little eyes, they should have showcased that that conversation because they deserve some blame too. If you're gonna blame Roxy, blame them too. Like th and that's that's, that's, the, that's that's the thing I don't understand because I don't blame Roxy at all. Like I don't blame her either, but if like we're gonna even, play this like blame even game, yeah, if if we're gonna do it, sure. Yeah. Um. Being being anime only, like I I I saw it on on the whole timeline everywhere. Like, oh no, they did the sh the episode was trash because they they completely moved away from the source material, whatnot. And that's that's where, personally, I say, okay, sure, be mad. Was it done? Is it still a good episode? Yes, it was. It was. I and me and Mazer talked about it. It's a, still a great episode. My problem was I wish they could have done it better because when you look at that situation with Roxy by itself, it's such there was going to be no right answer at the end of that. 
Mm-hmm. There was going to be none at all. Other than something that is completely unrealistic that Rudy's just like, you know what? It's okay. I don't need it. I'm going to find a way to pick myself up, which is something that sometimes when I watch Shonen's that really bothers me. Like, bro, you just you just watch your dad get killed. Why are you, like, perfectly okay afterwards? Mm-hmm. So, like, you know... Yeah, I, I'm 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 with you. I'm with you. And the the that episode in question, out of ten, what do you give it? Probably like a seven and a half. Like that really that ending part really bothers me because it puts it makes Roxy look really bad. It really does. And that really bothers me because this was not just a Roxy like Roxy, like the way okay. they made the anime made it look was like Roxy's like, you know what? I'm doing this. I'm doing it. When I know the source material was like, she didn't just like wake up one day or she didn't just think about this by herself. There was clearly more conversation going on. And I think that needed to be shown because that's so far out of the way Rox has been presented to us as viewers. That's so out of character. She's never that forceful, Santo. She's never that forceful. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I don't understand that because I didn't get that at all i don't think it painted her in in such a in 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 a bad way like literally she is seeing the love the the guy that she understands is the love of her life going through this agony to the point that like we we keep bringing it up and it's crazy that people really miss that he's losing weight he hasn't come out he's not eating Roxy literally takes one for the team. She she takes she she goes in. Rudy is pushes her hand away, like no. Yeah, he says no, no. Like get get a, like I'm fine. I I don't want to do anything. Roxy acknowledges that, and like no, I'm not. I'm not letting you go. Like I, I'm just not. You can push me away. I'm here. To the point that she, he she gets pushed away. She and she you think she's walking out like no, she closes the door. I'm here. Like, don't worry, I got you. Just I got you. Let me let me let me let me let me share this burden with you. She doesn't have to do that. And she understands that entire time he's married. He's in he loves Sylvie. She knows that. Mm-hmm. And she probably understands, like, hey. This might not be something for the future. Like it's a one-time thing, and you, I'm never gonna see him again. Mm-hmm. I don't think that paints her in a bad way. I think that's a lot of self-sacrifice. I I, and, I definitely see where you're coming that's, from. That's that, and that's how I took it. So when people when I saw the entire timeline, I was like, no, nah, Roxy took it. Like, she's bad. They painted her to be the like. I really, I guess, I missed that completely. I think that's the, the 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 dichotomy between me knowing the source material and you not. Like it, when you're looking at, it, I'm still I still go to my grave. Like just an episode itself, it's still a still a very great episode tackling mm-hmm. a really tough situation. The problem is, I know how it happened. If you want to say like the the light novel is another timeline, like we're going to do like AOT it. The light novel is another timeline compared to the mm-hmm. to the anime. I just know how it went before, and I thought that was way better, way like well done that way. But I understand, you know, trying to depict that entire situation the same in anime, that's different. There's always something that's lost, right? There's okay. always something that's lost. So that's just why I give it the score that I do. It's still a great, still a great episode. I'm not telling anybody not to watch it like some people have. Like, mm-hmm. it's still a great episode. I just think they, they could have done better. But it it's not, it's not, it's not what I've seen some people who are in, on my side of the fence say it is. It's just not that. Yeah. And like from what i saw like reactions and reviews people crushed it and i was like i guess i missed it completely so like that's that's just why me like i think because i just we just watched it me and mates just watched it so i was very like i didn't have time to sit down and really think about it but now that we have a moment like i get it i still wish that they did it Mm -hmm. the way that i thought they would do it but it's fine it's yeah. fine, Santo. It's you know what? It's okay because it still works. The point is still made across, and it was it was a risky decision, I think, because I think they really did, in a weird way, put Roxy out there, but they did it in such a good way that it still works that 
people like your anime only did not have a problem mm. and we're fine and, and we're fine and we keep we keep it pushing towards the next thing but um if we're going by the timeline that they use like two years so 2026 maybe early 2026 is when season three comes out i wouldn't be mad at that so yeah because i'm like keep it away from solo leveling and um tower of god keep it away from that um but basically it's going to be like the show is going to come back right before all the other all the other big east guys come back because remember michelle Tensei technically started fall of last year and mm-hmm. then finished up this year and um the ova is probably going to come probably either late next year or start of the year next uh, or late this year or start of the year next year just that random 30 minute i want i hope that they give it a lot of time like where they uh where they let just i know you don't like her but eris got a got a lot of things to do where she's at so Either way, man, um, it's been a fun season. I want to do. Um, I'm. I, I was talking with Mazel last week. I want to do a big season two kind of review or retrospective. Uh, obviously, I would love you, uh, Santo, to be on it. I'd love Lonnie to be on it, and we all just kind of talk about it. There's like so much that happened from, was it from Ed to Sarah mm-hmm. to Sylphie again to a little bit of schooling, like um, the beast, the beast girls. Um, so the Rudy get married, Norn and Aisha, like Paul, Zenith. There's so much, There's so much lot. happened. There's a lot there. So much happened. So like, um, I'm gonna we're gonna figure it out. Maybe get maybe give this season a couple couple weeks to breathe. Maybe I can pick up some stuff about what they're planning to do. Like when's the OVA coming out and blah blah blah. Um, there's 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 gonna be a lot going on. But before we end, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about Demon Slayer. Just talk about it. You want to talk about maybe the greatest hour and a half of anime I've seen in a while? Going from Ushoku Tensei to Demon Slayer. You foldable. We get it, bro. You got, you're great. You're great at what you do. You didn't need to flex Muzan walking into the Ubuyashiki compound <laughs> like that. From the smoke to the sound of his steps to like, you know, the little the little pans of him as he's walking up the conversation he had ubi shiki um the fact that this was all like you see it in the in the manga and the fact this is all just a ploy by ubi shiki to like catch muzan slipping because muzan is is a per like like every other demon they they just fumble the bag constantly every demon does every demon does and muzan is out here ubi shiki it's straight up talking shit to you in like the nicest way possible. And like you're like, well, none of that shit matters. I've never faced any any um any judgment from God, blah blah blah. This and that. And I'm like, why are you not getting what they're doing? Even the even like Ubi Shiki's daughters playing with a little ball, they're all just mm-hmm. buying time, bro. The more time they can get you closer to sunrise, they better than they better than they do. And then when finally they're like, he's like, Muzo's like, I'm done. I'm finally done listening to this bullshit. They blow your ass up. Tawayo jumps you, and the stone Hashira is there. Like, let's go. They immediately knock out. Like, if we're if we're keeping it a stack, Ubiyashiki's trap worked. It worked. Okay. It's just the fact that Muzan is the original, so he's not gonna get killed by getting his head cut off. But it was the mm-hmm. perfect plan. It was a perfect plan. I mean, I I, I will say. Is is this this is a great filler arc, right? It, 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 it's like, the best filler arc of all time, Santo. <laughs> like I I I, fin- I finished it and I was like, first of all, Michael Jackson would be proud. <laughs> like that's if the first thing I said. In there, Santo, I bro, I, that would have been perfect. I I I would. This is I, I literally. This is why anime is great. Like I I watched this and I was like. This is all filler. And also, there isn't much to go off of. The fact that they got an eight eight solid episodes, like not one episode was dull or slow. Like it it's well done. Animation was great, first of all. With Demon Slayer just has a standard that they they literally reset the standard mm-hmm. of, of what what it's supposed to be. Um 
that ending scene really did its job in preparing people of what's to come. Mm -hmm. Like for if, if people are just anime only, literally you are about to, if they do it right, which I really do believe that they, they will because they haven't let us confidence, full confidence. Santo, like I said, in the discord, those demon slayer movies are literally about to feed. We're going to be 50 Santo talking about these movies to your kids. And that, pa- like telling your kids to tell their kids about these movies. That's like, what that's what these movies are about to do. Like people, people have you know the, the my heroes, the JJKs, and like you know the Bleach, the Naruto's. You're sure they're up there, and I mean Naruto is my favorite anime of all time. But if they do this Infinity Castle art right, you see how they you see how they animated the Infinity Castle, Santo. It it was. It's, it's beautiful. It's it's all CGI. The best mm-hmm. CGI in anime. I don't care what you say. It's beautiful, Santo. It's beautiful. No, I I, I don't have it off the top of my head, but I mean, I, I'll I'll look into stuff because that's that's. Whenever we say greatest, like I, I like to like Santo. Look at that thing, man. It. I mean, it's it's fantastic. It, oh it's, my god. It's, Demon Slayer, like I said, I I generally I, I say this. They're the standard. They they are legit the standard of animation. Like I think their animation is better than JJK. I mm-hmm. think it's better than Black Clover. Cook. I think it's better than Chainsaw. Cook. I I. It's better it, than Hell's it, Paradise. It, it's oh, one hundred percent. 100%. They're the standard. And just in like little things, like just in and I and I know you don't you don't like Sanemi, but just in the movements and how they draw Sanemi oh. trying to poke out his eyes, like like I if they what not not if when they do this Infinity Castle. I just want to see how it looks. I'm going to say this to King Lion. I'm going to say this to King Lion. When the Infinity Castle art comes out, that shit going to be selling like the MCU did in its prime. I, I, I'll, I'll say this because I wasn't on. We we really let him. We really let him off. You got. We, we let, let him off. To, let me tell you. He was a guest. He was a guest. He, he was a guest. I, I get he that. Was a guest. And, I just want to shout out the chat because we were holding, we were, we were holding that ground. We really, we can't, let's just say this, Santo, we can't wait for him to come back. The the term trending? Comics can't hold a candle. In the last time. So he's throwing, he was throwing the Superman pictures at us. Like that's trending. Gojo. Gojo is still trending on Twitter, and he hasn't done anything since he died months ago. When Gojo died, broke the internet, Mm -hmm. Shibuya, they had to tell people, hey, please stop putting up pictures of Gojo on the wall of Shibuya. When Nanami died, they literally made a national park a sign for with Nanami smiling at the beach like there's There's i get i i get i get that you have more because one of the biggest things that kept bringing up is quantity sure i get that you have the volume you don't have the same level of impact trending because just because you have more things to talk about doesn't mean that you're trending like Gojo's death broke the internet. Aside from Endgame, tell me something that has the same level of impact. He can't. He, and he, he will can't. Lie. He will lie. He will lie and say the Superman pages when I'm like, you're lying, bro. You're lying. Nobody is pulling up. Nobody across the world is pulling up to watch. Um, like for instance, Mexico is a Mexico loves Dragon Balls. They love mm-hmm. it. 
they they mainline that thing. Goku versus Jiren was being filmed, was being shown in drive-ins so people could go watch it together. They weren't doing that for comics outside no. of Endgame. They weren't doing that. And they were doing that week every week, Santo. People were driving up to your drive-in and sitting down and watching it. It was so bad to the point Japan sent a letter to Mexico saying, hey, please stop doing this. Please stop doing this. And Mexico said, no, we're going to keep doing it. And I think we really we really let off though because he was a guest. But the next time we see next time we see King Lion, we about to have some knockout dragouts for hopefully not four four hours because that's crazy. <laughs> that was dude trying to download that episode on my computer. My computer my, just said no. Yeah, my <laughs> PC was like, we can't do it, man. We, we're gonna take a while. We're not gonna be able to get it done tonight. Oh, and so. that's just and that's just main characters. Gojo, Yuji, Sure, Yuta, fine. To Toji was trending. Toji was trending. <laughs> Nanami's trending. When when uh what's his name? Toto came back. He was trending. Oh yeah. Like when when he on when he unveiled the the virus lab. I, yes. Dude, my musician friends is like we finally get recognition in anime. <laughs> <laughs> like like there's 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 really like levels to things. Sure, you have volume, you have quantity. The quality of anime in the term trending, it is not comparable. And I wanted, I want to ask him, name the last time something in comics trended like Gojo dying, because you can't, because you can't. Oh, I can tell you, Batman who laughs. And even then, I still Gojo dying still clears. You know what? Sure, sure. I, I, I'll say sure. And I and I still would have Gojo clears, Gojo dying still clears. Nobody and... was talking about the way it was. The like, God, even when Bakugo died, it looked like he died in My Hero. People were losing their minds. Oh, and losing the, and their this, minds. And this is just, and, and we're just talking. You know, they're still top anime, but we're not even talking about Gear Five. Mm -hmm. Like Gear Five finally happened. broke the internet is like finally and the the statement what the statement that he said is that you have one thing and once that thing is over that's that's it and i'm like no it that that's that's not the case because the following week it trends again mm -hmm. the following week something has trends like fairy tale was trending it's not even out yet like mm -hmm. it's it's like fairy tales back. Tower of God too. When it comes out, like just I just think, know I that that, that we in the chat we were heated. A serious we, we were discussion. Heated. I know, and 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 that's why we because we talked about it after the pod. Like right now, right like right now, uh, Miles. Right now, right now at this moment, Sparking Zero's trending, Fairy Tales trending, Final Fantasy fourteen is trending. Like Gojo's, Gojo's, you photo bulls trending, Gohan's trending right now. What has Gohan done to be trending? Tell me, what has Gohan done to be trending? Be in a video game. The last time we saw Gohan, he fought, he beat UI Goku. That was two months ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why is he trending? I'm looking right now. No Spider Man, no Iron Man, no Superman, no Batman. None of them are trending. So we, re mm. we really let him off the hook. But you you foldable is about I Santo. I think you foldable is the greatest, um, not great, it's the best anime studio out right now. It's the best. Some people are okay. gonna throw a mappa. Let let you foldable have attack on Titan. Let you foldable uh, let you foldable adapt attack on Titan, and you're about to see some stuff. I mean. I'm not saying Mappa didn't do that. Mappa did a great job with Attack on Titan, but there's a reason why Mappa is legitimately trying to take everything, and Ufotable just picks his points. Omnipotent, um, omnipotent reader that they Ufotable got that. Santo, what they're going to do with that series, with that manhwa, what they're going to do with that manhwa, Santo, 
is going to feed fam. Korea, it, that be, might be the first time Korea's like, you know what, the people in Japan, they're all right. <laughs> they're all right. We, we're we going to let y'all slide for solo. We're going to let y'all slide for solo leveling because you're doing this right. You foldable. I, I think Demon Slayer is the best anime adaptation of all time. I'm willing to have that conversation. For yes. what they've done from the an, from the manga, they've enhanced. They've completely enhanced it. Completely enhanced the series. I think I'm prepared to have those conversations. Now, I mean, obviously, they, they, I, I want to hold off a little bit. But if those movies do what they do, Santo, I don't know who can tell me that Demon Slayer does not deserve to be in that conversation. I mean, I mean, ba based on base, and like I said, you guys know more about manga than I do because I'm a I'm very heavy in anime only. Mm -hmm. But the job that they've done with this season, with the limited source material, not a lot of anime like, studios are doing that. Like not at all. Like. If you go read Tanjiro flying, like making a paper plane and the, how they stretch that to like eight minutes, like that is insane. That is one panel. Mm -hmm. And the dialogue, the, and that's what, that's what I was, that's what I was saying. I think I, I was mentioning to you that that is, I wish main studios in cinema did this exact same thing that Demon Slayer did. Take your source material and just expand on it and don't change the story. Because a lot of people take, a lot of these studios are taking um, creative freedoms into import, in, inputting their, their vision and what they think the story should be or all of that. And it's ruining things. It, it literally, Star Wars is the main one. They are like I didn't think you could ruin Star Wars, but it's it's oh like literally I'm saying it it's done like Star Wars shouldn't make any more content. I'm legitimately point. saying Santa, we talked about it in the Telegram just ourselves. Give you foldable a Star Wars story you don't care about, and watch them make magic with it. They would cook. They would absolutely cook. They. It's like, you know, when somebody just got it, like whether let's just use sports. 2000, 2012 Eastern Conference Finals, game five, LeBron James. The minute yeah. you saw that look, he just got it. There's nothing Boston could do. There's nothing the state of Massachusetts could do. There's nothing anybody defending LeBron James could do. He was great. The best game mm -hmm. he's ever played. Mm -hmm. The minute you saw... The minute you saw Ufotable grab onto Demon Slayer, was Demon Slayer even before the thing that, that made it go viral with the Rin, with the Rin moment? Demon Slayer was, you were like, damn, it looks great. Good series, great action. It's a good, it's a good anime. You could really tell they have a handle on the story. And then that's when Demon Slayer, uh, Ufotable was like, hold my beer. Let me show you something real quick. Let me show you something real quick. And we thought that was good enough. We would have been fine with season one, Santo. We would have been fine mm -hmm. with that. That season two, you was like, watch what we're about to do. We're let's, about let, to. We're gonna change the game right now. We're, watch we're <laughs> for 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 two months, Santo, two months, with Attack on Titan doing its final season. With I remember, I can't remember the other one that was with it. There were three, I think was it? Uh, it was it was Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan, and something else. There were three great anime running on Sunday at the same time. And okay. with those heavy hitters next to it, with um, everything leading up to the rumbling, everybody was like, did you fucking see that Demon Slayer episode? Did you? Like, I can't believe it. For two months, maybe because a lot of when I was arguing with Leon in the in the Discord, uh, in the Discord about, I think, Teng, the, the Tengen fight's the greatest fight mm -hmm. of all time. Like, he was like, no, 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 no. And he's trying to classify it now. That's why I said, right, look, I think maybe greatest fight if you're trying to keep it one-on-one. -on -one. I think that entire sequence of fights from Daki Tanjiro to Daki Nezuko to, uh, what is it, freaking, what's his name, to that one one scene of Tengen to Daki, then Tengen Gyutaro, then everybody starts rolling up, mm -hmm. and it's a huge-ass battle. That's the greatest fight of all time. 
at one point you were like, yeah, they're going to do this. They're like, oh, my God, everybody's dead. And Tadro's <laughs> left with his sister. And when he runs, Santo, you get it. Ain't mm-hmm. nothing he can do. He's running. The, the demons are trolling at this point. They're laughing at him. You're watching Zenitsu, like, trying to crawl out from the wreckage, but he's cooked. Uh, what's his name? In it, those it, case, it, bleeding out on the on, on it, some it, roof. <laughs> Like, <laughs> dude, it, it, like the I, and I was I was streaming it in the chat. That whole that whole that whole um that whole thing, um, when Inosuke saws the the demon's head off and he's running, and you're like, and like, Hell like, yeah. yes, we're we're we're, get, yes. we're making progress, and yes, you just see it. the you just see it come out of his chest. And you're like, like oh, 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 oh no, no. We're, we're down bad. And then was like, wait a minute, how did he get there? And he looks over, Tegan's on the ground, his head's cut off, and you're like, oh my god. Like, what yeah, happened? We, we are not in a good we are, spot. We are cooked. <laughs> even even the little moments, like, remember when the fight's really starting to get started, and then Hinatsuru throws her with stereo kunai at him, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, Gyutaro just grabs her, grabs her face, and this sheer terror from Tengen, this sheer terror that he when he says mm-hmm. her name, and I'm like, guys, I really need. When he said, when when Leon said Sakuna Maharaga, and you put that gif of 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 Jennifer Lawrence spitting laughing, oh, I, I was like, I don't know. Go back and watch that fight, man. Six episodes of just the greatest. It's not even just because they're like, what do you care about animation? No, the character work, Santo, the music, the special effects, the animation. Oh my God! Even the even even at the end of the fight, they leave you with a, a when Gyutaro blows up. Because at that point, I had not read the manga yet. Okay. When Gyutaro blows up, and then the, it just, you see the explosion, and that's it. Like, it doesn't go to the ending. You just see the credits roll. No music. Mm-hmm. No nothing. You just hear, like, the debris falling on the ground. And I'm like, from start to finish, Santo, from start to finish. I, I mean, I... I I've been saying that as well. Like in terms of animation, they they raised the bar. Absolutely. Like 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 I and I from because even when when Lonnie was debating um, King Lion regarding Madam Web and you know sound quality, it's it's so important. Like the it's just the things like that that really get me because I I, I work from a production perspective. Mm-hmm. Like when Tanjiro when Tanjiro is there. And he can't hear, and you're only and you're, you're getting from his perspective, and he can't hear nothing as he's trying and to he's just, his breath. And, and you and just he... see Tangan running towards him, and the look of like, We are screwed, run, move, do something. Can you hear me? And he's like, I can't hear anything. Is what, what's going on? And it, like, his the tone in his voice, it doesn't sound like agony, it doesn't sound like pain, it's like it's just soft, like, What is going on? And Everything behind him, in front of him, like we are about to get screwed, and I don't know what to do. I can't hear anything, and that look of despair in Tengen's face with no sound, like it's very rare that battle shonen have that, and that Tengen fight has it in droves. There's multiple times of like still shots or like very slow motion movements when something really, really impactful happened. That in no case stab in his chest was like, like it, it it's it's impactful. Or when Ten, when Tanjiro saves um one of Tengen's wives and he's like, thank you. Like, like just the way he says thank you. Like it was such a relief in the fight while. We're still fighting this this god character right now that we just can't whoopee. Like that fight's great. It's amazing. I got you. No, 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 no. You're completely right. So look, all the ones that you've mentioned, because they they at they because Leon said is animation a big part? It has to be when it comes to fights. Oh, 100 percent It has to be. I'm not we're not saying that it's everything, but it's 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 a big piece of the pie. Like the choreography of that fight. There's a reason why nobody ever puts a Baki fight in those conversations. Nobody mm-hmm. ever does. 
Nobody ever does, despite the fact you have amazing characters. They all have amazing fighting styles. Nobody ever puts it up there. Like, for instance, the Yujiro, uh, uh, Yujiro Baki fight should be one of the best fights we'll ever see. But they're going to do it wrong. They're going to do it wrong because we've never seen from whoever animates or Netflix or whatever. We've never seen them get whatever that part. No Baki fight has ever trended. No Baki fight has. Even even we were we were let down by the upper moon uh, in the swordsmanship village arc. That was still like, damn, that was amazing. Like, was that, it as like, great as Tengen? No, no, but it was still amazing. But what the only thing that it wasn't as great is because the the emotional impact of that fight isn't the same with mm -hmm. with Tengen. It it really isn't in in terms of how it looks. Like it's it's up it's right there with it. Like all of the Demon Slayer fights, th they might have the best looking fights in anime. Mm -hmm. Like like the only one I can say is Fate. And ironically, guess who makes Fate? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was I was telling Leon I I think that God of High School mm. or um, the Outcast season three mm. have very well choreographed very very smooth animation fights and and this is the thing that I personally don't and he brought up the the Sukuna Maharaga fight I think that. It's the same as Mob Psycho mm. that they can get away with drawing some. I call it like dirty drawing. They can get away with something not being smooth. It looks like it's not clean. It's not polished. It's still pretty to look mm. at. It's still very fluid and whatnot, but it's not as polished as something as Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer, you can literally pause it and go frame by frame. And it looks clean. You do that with the Sakuna Maharaga fight. At sometimes it's du it's dirty, it's, it's dirty. muddy, it's a blob. We did that when we were watching the Heaven's Field movies. Me and Miles, we paused it multiple times. When right when when uh, Archer and Assassin are fighting, we mm -hmm. paused it multiple times. There's one point they're fighting in a forest, and uh, Assassin just jumps off a tree branch right before Archer gets there, and Archer cuts the tree branch. You see the tree branch getting cut. The sonic, the sound wave or the sonic boom, whatever you want to call it, of of the action that the archer did. Plus, you're seeing um, assassin backing away, and you're seeing archer in his position. You can see he's already getting ready to land, so he can continue chasing. All that at once. No part of it is dirty, except unless you want to say like the the sky or whatever, mm -hmm. the complete background. Nobody does it like that. Nobody does. And and I think that's why I'm willing to give um, Demon Slayer the praise that it has about it being the best anime adaptation. The the I think it has the best fight in anime. I think you photo boy is is is, is lit. you photo boy has been on a run that we do not talk about enough because Mappa drops a new anime every season, and you photo boy chooses quality over quantity, and it's proven that we can make just as mon much money as Mappa, and we don't need to do three quarters of the work that they do we don't need to taking you taro like I, I hope i hope people really understand that obviously i think rodell might might give some pushback because of you know a on titans his favorite series mm -hmm. but i'm telling y'all at the end of every week we were talking about tag on titan we were we absolutely were but we were talking about taking you taro more than tag on titan we just were what we were seeing in that fight was some shit we've never seen before never seen before yeah i mean the the attack on titan would be a hard one because things like things would happen and then we would move forward mm -hmm. what that tengen fight did it's literally they have the model of like a dbz mm. like that frieza fight lasted about what a month or two mm -hmm. like that tengen fight it ahead, literally sorry, sorry. It, it literally has that same model like it we are extending and and for for everybody that's listening yes we bring up the tengen Gitaro fight a lot because it's up there 
but literally you can have these same talks with multiple fights of demon slayer rin tanjiro like rin tanjiro we, we were we were having we were having these same discussions maybe like not as big but Rengo when rengoku Go, go rengoku the train demon mm -hmm. the uh, uh lower moon one we were having the same this the minute tanjiro we thought tanjiro cut rin's head off and we we never saw anything like that in terms of just the way it looked j rob i don't even have to say it j rob sings that moment's praises because it's like that's when we that's when we realize demon slayer is something special we we re, we were watching every week we thought it was good but the minute we saw that we we're like oh god we're watching something special like like one one moment i i'm and people really don't have the 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 sword village arc really high because i mean compared to the other ones mm -hmm. it, it it doesn't really compare but when what's it, muichiro i think i'm saying it right when the mist Hash hashira yeah yeah muichiro, muichiro. when he does his mist breathing the first time in the house mm -hmm. like i need people to go back and watch the shading and the the um the lens flare mm -hmm. of that episode how everything it just it the transitions the it it's so smooth the light sparks everything they have literally they've raised the standard of animation i don't think we get a blue lock animation wise if you don't if if you have if you don't have a demon slayer i like, might agree with you like literally uh, you like all the breathing techniques is literally what blue lock does mm -hmm. demon slayer might have the best looking fights in anime i think i'm I'm willing to have the discussion i just look i just watched um i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna make a video because i made a video of the orochimaru uh recording of me reacting to orochimaru sasuke and the force of death right okay because that's one of the fights that they told me i needed to watch right because what i'm doing is i'm reading the arc then i'm watching it that's why it's okay, taking okay, me a really okay. long time so i just watched rock lee gara that Ooh. is that's great peak. peak like and and sauce asked me this question are you saying or it was either sauce or leon saying are you saying that older fights don't have a chance because of the animation i was like no rock lee gara is fantastic start to finish mm -hmm. like and I think that might have been, if I saw it at the time, that might have been my choice for best fight ever. That okay. might have been my choice. But then Tengen Yutara, I'm sorry. From start to finish, it beats it in everything. And I'm not, and, and it's not, you could say it's not fair. Animation-wise, it was always going to lose. But I think the character work is is better. The fact that it was it was able to juggle, it wasn't just Tengen and Tanjiro fighting Yutara and Daki. There was like eight people fighting. There was like eight people fighting. And, and at one point, there's this real quick. There's this one shot which I know you you know I'm talking about, and I know you're gonna appreciate. They give you a big shot. You're watching Tengen and Gyutaro fight, and they're doing. It's not like they're just kind of moving. They're doing moves, Santo. They're doing move. The choreography's there. You're watching. Um, uh, what is it? Tanjiro, um, Zenitsu and Inosuke, Inosuke. fight Daki. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. the ninjas. His wives are moving around doing stuff. Like, that's incredible. That's incredible what they're doing. That's incredible. And I don't understand. People do not understand. Like, I'm not even an animation guy. I, I, I don't make animation. I'm just in the industry. Y'all do not understand how ridiculous that is. And and I, I know the exact scene. That I, I know the, the sequence that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And what people really need to remember is that a lot of previous animes, like Naruto versus Pain, mm -hmm. that I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, I'll, you, I'll, you, I, you, I, you, I, you, I know, I know what you're talking about. I, I know what you're talking about. I just haven't seen it, but or, I know that they or right. or Mob Psycho or Sukuna Maraga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They do the same thing. They give you a wide shot and they focus on, you know, really, let's say they focus on Sukuna Maharaga and everything else. A lot of the things is not clean. Everything in that Demon Slayer fight is polished. Mm -hmm. Everything is drawn properly. 
Nothing is like a like a rough sketch. No, everything is polished. Even look at the last episode when all the Hashra land on the building when it's blown mm. up and you're seeing the pan of the devastation and you're watching the stone Hashra and Muzan are throwing down. Don't forget, you still see Lady Tamayo getting absorbed by Muzan at yeah. the same time. That's ridiculous. People, God, when, when you see this, I want you guys to understand. How ridiculous that is. This isn't like somebody looked nasty or they took a shot. They said every single piece of this shot, you are going to see everything. Don't forget how ridiculous the fire effects are, uh, Santo. Like, Did it's just... great. Okay. Are you okay? You froze? You froze a little bit. Yeah, I, I just froze. Yeah, but it's great. It's great. Start to finish, at, like, that Homelander gif. Or, or clip it was perfect 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 down to the last minute detail it was perfect and you photobook keeps giving you that every single season god santo this is the i don't care this is the greatest filler arc of all time i don't care what they've done with just what a few chapters maybe six seven eight chapters of the hashira training arc what they've done to be able to make eight quality episodes out of it. Don't forget all the things they stuff. They shut the stuff that you saw. The I always forget her name. The demon that that does the teleporting with the doors. You see her stalking yeah. the demon stairs the whole time, right? Um, Zenitsu's challenge. And the crazy part is, I don't even think a lot of people were paying attention to that. Zenitsu's now a different dude. We don't. I've, I know what was written on the tape paper. You mm -hmm. have you read Demon Slayer? Yeah, yeah. I've, you I've know read. what was written on the paper, mm -hmm. so we understand. But. Like it's different. Even the fact that um in the Stone Hashira's backstory, all that extra stuff about the the guy who was technically Zenitsu Senpai. Yeah. Uh when 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 they were training under the 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 lightning hashira in the in, in the that it it's like the paper plane that you mentioned, the fight with Obanite, which is legitimately just a few panels in the manga. Mm -hmm. Just a few panels. Even the thing they showing the moment he has Murata, the guy that the only other one regular demon slayer that we know, the only one <laughs> to the point that um, I, was it was it was it Tanjiro and Tanjiro is like remembering Zenitsu and and Inosuke and he shows up. I'm like, oh, yes. you're really that important? Okay. <laughs> like also, by the way, I read a thing and we've probably wrapped up because we've been going for almost two hours. He apparently can sun breathe. So you know the, the so, kind of thing because his, his the, sword is black. Yeah, because he has a black blade. So because the people they just didn't know because the Laura was lost or blaming the um whoever the flame Hashira was at the time. Like the fact that Rengoku's dad tore up that fucking book pisses me the fuck off. Trash pisses me off because you were jealous. This is not about you. This is not about you at all. This is not about you at all. And and the fact that they were able to um. To show that and the fact that every black blade, because nobody always thought it was kind of like bad. All those people were capable of sun breathing. Now, would they have been as great as Tanjiro? No. Mm -hmm. But the fact that there was always the they had the cheat code the whole time. They just never knew it. And and it's, it's and I really like the fact that we see him, Murata, mm -hmm. even though I think he's gonna die. I think they're gonna kill him. Because you know the moment where all the demon slayers kind of stand in front. Yeah. Murata's gonna be one of them, and he's going he's gonna die right there. I hope. I, th I think you you you, I, you you give the you really don't believe in the demon slayer corpse. I think they're all. they're bad. They're not. No, no, no. no, no obviously, I mean, you you say this, but I, I I say this. So I think this they make a bad job in showing how good they are. But have in mind, everybody that's doing the stone Hashiro's training passed everybody else no that's no no i agree i agree like <laughs> the fact that we, we met murata up there i said like, okay okay yeah because he made which means the crazy part is after i saw murata's time like bro you tell me he went band for band with overnight to the point open i was like get out of here mm -hmm. not he went band for band with tsunami and said get out of here like i hope and I, I just I understand that but i i just my thing is, I don't think they're supported well enough. I understand that you cannot, the, the country of Japan, you cannot acknowledge the Demon Slayer Corps' existence. Mm -hmm. But let's not sit here and pretend like they that like you don't know demons exist. And the minute that 
why is Genya the only one who's like, like the minute somebody saw Genya shoot a demon with that gun and it was effective, everybody should have one. It's not even like, it's not even like everybody should have Glock. It's, I think it's just the fact that they're not supported well. And just leaving the, the Japanese government, leaving the, the Ubi Yashikis to figure it out by themselves is just bad. I'm not well, saying you got to mobilize whole armies because at that point, Japan was turning imperial. If you're going to go by um, the history mm -hmm. and let's be honest, they're starting to, they're starting to invade Asia. Like they go to, mm -hmm. they go to Korea, take that over. They take over Japan. They start going down to like Japan is, is, is about to be in a period of rapid growth. So I understand that th like, we got to worry about the world itself, not the demon slayer core, but bro, y'all got some extra guns. You can send them. But I'm I'm saying this, like if that is that is the only gun that we see. So it's implied based based on based on what we what we've seen, it's implied that this is rare. I don't think so, though. At that moment, we can maybe only the go off, based on maybe, maybe the sawed off because I don't even know if they had sawed offs. Do they have sawed offs back? I don't know. Somebody no. can tell me. But I think the fact that they have guns at all. No, that that he has a gun, not that. Where did he get it from? Did he just find it on the street? But that's what I'm saying. Like it's it's rare, but because you, you don't see it anywhere else, but in his in his hand. I think I think that's rude to just believe that that's they can't be. I understand that they're rare. I understand that's maybe rude wasn't the right word. I, I'm like I I understand that it's rare, mm -hmm. but when you're fighting some such an existential like enemy in your own borders mm -hmm. go go call america you 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 trade with them <laughs> go call america have them send you some guns muzan muzan won't care he won't stop the guns until he knows that they're a problem but that's what i'm saying we can only go based on what we have like like of what I you guess, what you've like, seen <laughs> that's the problem i wish they found a better way to do it than than a gun because the minute you introduce a gun into it you're telling me that you have the ability to engage in a you you have the ability to be way more dangerous against demons and it's just like then it's irresponsible then i wish they were like look that's the only gun we could get from the government the government doesn't want to give us guns because then maybe we could become a problem after we solve the like the demon crisis i i, I would exp I would i would have taken that explanation okay bet fine fine but the fact that they they just like hey he has a gun that's it that's yeah. all we're gonna talk about it i'm like uh the fucking media has a gun what do you mean he has a gun? You tell me right now in Bleach, if some, if if, if Ukiora pulled out a gun and just started shooting Ichigo, you'd be like, uh, what the fuck? Why does he have a gun? I mean, we. I'm just saying, I, I, the I, gun I, itself it raises further questions. That's all I'm saying. I don't think it. I think I don't think it raises questions. I mean, sh would you want? You're the one, you, you probably want an explanation, but I, I don't. I don't think it raises questions. No, he's, maybe he's it's just, just the maybe, only. Maybe it's my head cannon, but I'm it's, just saying. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. I I don't care if I'm Tanjiro or Yoro or or Yoroichi. Give me a fucking gun. <laughs> they they had muskets in the Sengoku period. You tell me, no Demon Slayer was like, let me pick one of these up. They were <laughs> yeah, everywhere. Yeah. They were everywhere. Nobunaga so, Oda was running around with three thousand of them at a time. Okay, so so you so go using your your. You played Samurai uh, Warriors, Hanzo. I I pl I played some. Sure, I've played Samurai <laughs> Warriors. I played Dynasty. Sure, let's go based on that. You're talking about Asia. You're talking about a a very strong culture who values swordsmanship. Like. Is it fair to say that they don't see something like a gun as something that's honorable and reputable? Because that's they literally have a whole village that is just for making swords. Like they hold the sword in such a value that using a gun is something that is dishonorable or disrespectful to their culture to the point that Genya can't make it so i'm doing everything i can to where i'm eating demons i am i have a i have a i have a gun just to make it here like i'm doing whatever it takes can we look at it that way <laughs> okay fine i'm just saying <laughs> like just saying i'm just saying like the minute genya died against upper moon one so let me pick that thing up
<laughs> pick that thing up. Like that should not be the last time somebody like that should not be the last time somebody's using a gun in that series. Pick that thing up. Shoot by moves way, on when he's a giant baby. Shoot his ass. I don't care. Shoot his by, ass with it. By the way, King Lion, that moment is going to trend. When Genya dies, spoiler, by the way, everybody, spoiler alert. But he ain't making he, it to the end. I'm I'm sorry. When he passes away, trust me. R.I.P. Genya, sad face. R.I.P. Genya, sad face, crying face. R.I.P. Genya, R.I.P. Genya, demon slayer. All of that's trending. Uh, <laughs> but Jesus, we've been going for two hours. Um, that was our review of episode 24 of Mashoku Tensei Jobless Reincarnation Succession. The season's officially done. Um, we also talked a lot more demon slayer than I thought because. King Lion was capping, and we let him cap, and I'm I'm be mad about it until further notice. But um, I don't know if what other series I want to do this for, because I thought I was gonna do this for more, but right now it's Mashoku Tensei. Maybe ReZero in the fall, Santo. Maybe, but I don't know. I don't think so. I because ReZero. Happen. The problem, my my problem is ReZero. I gotta watch every episode twice to understand what the fuck's happening. So, um, <laughs> and I, I know it's great, Santo. I know it's great. The first time I'm watching it, just to watch it, right? And then second mm -hmm. one, I'm like, all right, let me fucking let me lock in because I know the I know the I know the story, but there's some shit going on. There's probably some references. I gotta watch it again. So I don't know. Um, but I want to do this uh eventually because the blue lock movies getting ready to come out. By the way, anime movies this year, Santo. Like that, every yeah. single one. That every single movie. one. Every I, single I, one knocked out the part. I haven't seen I haven't seen the hike haiku movie yet, but I'm planning to. I I I I want to obviously Blue Lock, Spy Family. Did the Boy and the Heron come out this year? Or was that last year? I think um, it was this year. This year. So I mean, they're they're damn near batting a thousand in anime movies, plus all the other ones that we probably haven't even talked about. Um, and then you foldable, just let me know when the movies are coming out so I can buy the so I can buy the tickets expeditiously just because stay, your boy stay, just just stay the course. Just just. Oh. Don't fix anything. Just just keep doing what you're doing. I'm not even saying you need like a crazy budget. Use the same budget you made for fucking um, Mugen Train and you're going to do great because you know they're going to clean it up so well. And um, I'm going to get like fork and screen at the AMC um, uh, Santo. I'm going to be by myself. Give me some food, maybe a couple drinks because I'm going to be locked in for a while. And I think the first movie is Zenitsu versus his senpai. That's who gets the first mm -hmm. the first crack. And then it's Akaza, uh, Tanjiro, and Giyu. And then it's the Upper Moon 1 fight in the last one, leading to the Muzan fight. Yes. So we're gonna be we're gonna be leaving the theater every movie exhausted in awe and mm -hmm. and like legitimately like I cannot wait to like you should crash the podcast on Tuesday. Following the, the and be like, yo, we need to talk about this. Fuck whatever we're talking about. I don't care. I don't care about ReZero or whatever anime we're talking about. We need to talk about this because I have a feeling when everything's done, Santo, my my declaration of Demon Slayer being the greatest adaptation of all time, anime adaptation of all time, is gonna stand and it's gonna look great. I mean, the the it's it's the term. The, I'm I'm very hesitant. You you know me. I'm yeah. very hesitant with the with the term. Maybe greatest, great, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say best. I'm gonna say best for now. It's, it's greatest is different. I'm gonna say best. I'm gonna say best. But um, anything else you want to say for the people as we head out, Santo? Um, I keep I keep saying it. Oblivion battery. You guys tap in. Um, the goat of this episode is Silphy. Or Milfia is like like the culture calls it. Um, Milfie, Milfie I, until further notice, <laughs> you see how she I, looks, man. It's fantastic. From the earrings um, to the hair. Oh, um, I would say if we are going to do something like this going forward with another, I would suggest Tower of God. Um, we'll we'll need Riddell for that. That's his series. I think I think that would be a, a very very good option unless you want to go with the fan favorite and go fairy tale. Um, that's that's just me. I know you're not really excited. I'm not about a, I'm it, not but... a big fairy tale guy, but 
we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk mm-hmm. about it off. We'll talk about it off because yeah. those are two good options right there. I think Tower of God is the pick, but I'm not I, as I knowledgeable. So too. I'm not as knowledgeable as t- in Tower of God as Riddell is. But the problem is Riddell's a busy guy. So I mean, we could just kind of we could just kind of watch it ourselves and just kind of be two casuals talking about Tower of God yeah. and and try to figure it out. So and then maybe Riddell's like, I'm tired of you guys <laughs> misbirching my series, right <laughs> and maybe that's how we finally get him on here. But it's it's been it's been it's been it's been this has been a lot of fun doing this for damn near the better part of four months. I, I did it on a whim the first episode of this season, just kind of do it, and then it's been a lot of fun. Um, and being, being being getting a lot of traction too, in terms of mm-hmm. you know people just kind of watching, commenting, all that. Um, so you know, even even somebody somebody I, I remember a comment when I said that when when the Ares OVA is going to come out, like maybe December, maybe December, because the Ares OVA came out of no the first one for season mm-hmm. one came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, somebody sent me a minute like, hey, uh, there's there's an OVA out, so. I think it might even take that long, maybe give the season some time to breathe. Because once you, I really think they should really craft this one well because nobody's saying you got to have to like show in a new light, but there's a lot of people asking questions about Eris, about where she's been, what she's doing, what, like Santo, why should we care about her right now after what she did to Rudy? There's, there's so much going on and, and you just got to make sure you, you, you get it off on the right foot because presumably that's that's the only time i want to see eris until if they do season three the way i think until the end of season three when she when okay when she properly returns back to the story so it's going to be it's going to be very interesting but it's going to start off like core two it's going to be a lot of slice of life at the start but then you and i are going to be like nah man don't trust it (laughs) when the anxiety hits and you see turning point, I'm like, oh. Turning point four, I might legitimately be like, I'm sorry. Because once turning point comes out, it's like Santo, and I'm not even trying to be like facetious or like glaze it or whatever. It's going to legitimately blow your mind because there's so many things right now around it that I want, I want to tell you. I want to tell you, Santo, because a lot of things are to come together, but I can't. But I just can't. But you know what? We've been talking long enough. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Make sure you subscribe to the BSS. Um, I don't know what we're talking about on Tuesday yet. Um, I'll ask Riddell. But uh, we had King Lion on last week. We talked for like four hours. We let him cap a lot, and we and, and and we definitely paid for it. But it, it was such a it was such a fun time because we don't really bring on a lot of guests onto our pod unless you know it's really worth it. But it's been a lot of fun. Um, he's definitely going to come on another time. But thank you guys so much for supporting us. We we hit over 8K. Now we're going to keep moving because 10K is, is, is coming sooner than we right thought, there. Sato. Right. We thought we, we, we thought it was going to be, what, ending of the year? Maybe we get to 10K. <laughs> and and once we got that big jump uh, in, like, what, a month ago, we got, like, a we were, like, barely 5K or not even before 5K. We were like barely like 4K, 3K, something like that. And also we got a huge jump. Then we're 5K. Then we're 6K. Now we're we're 7K. We're like, hey man, we're 80, we're like 80 subscribers off of 8K. Now we're like halfway through 8K. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. We can't thank you guys enough. And I got a lot of content dropping. I got a um chainsaw man um video coming out talking about uh Denji's quest for intimacy and Santo. A lot of people think intimacy is sexual when it's not. It's really not very good point. And um, and seeing that situation he was in with Asa really opened my mind. And I talked I talked a lot with Ty off like just by ourselves, because I always whenever I have like really intricate story question, you know, Ty's an author. You got to talk Ty's, to him. See how he he's, looks he's actually. When I first met Ty, Ty mm-hmm. really came off. I, 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 I'm just going to be completely on. I thought Ty was arrogant at one point. Mm-hmm. But after having like interactions with him and hearing him speak, Ty is very, very intellectual and he's very knowledgeable of how to do things correctly, in, especially in storytelling. Mm-hmm. I really, really enjoy to hear 
hear him, hear him break down a story and the intricacies and what went into making the story and why it's done that way. Mm -hmm. So I, I give it to him. He's he's a really big resource. I think at some point I I, I told Ty the last time I talked to him, hey man, you ever just thought about writing a book about writing? Because I think you 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 do it very well. And I understand, you know, he he like even when you're on the podcast, he gave King Lion a lot of love because Ty's 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 on mouth. He wouldn't be who he is today without King Lion, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, just kind of hearing how he talks, like these these Chainsaw Man talks that I've had with him, I've been very illuminating. And I'm trying to get him to just throw a few quotes on the pod uh, on the, on the video because I think he will say it in a way that I just can't. Mm -hmm. And um, and like I said. Um, with the with the Chainsaw Man one in particular, Denji's quest for intimacy is so it's it's the it's like it's like it's it's really the story of Chainsaw Man. The fights, the demons, the devils, all that stuff is part of it. But Denji Denji just wants somebody to like to be cool with, like you know to 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 like on a Wednesday after he comes home from school kick or whatever, and he just wants to kick it with somebody, and he and he and he had it. And he had it. The my, my maybe my favorite part of Chainsaw Man is that those few chapters we got where him, Power, and Aki were just living together. Mm -hmm. And Super Eye Patch Wolf, ironically, he's a big YouTuber in the anime space. Um, he does he does a great job when he talks about Chainsaw Man, talking about that moment in particular. That I also use parts of that for my video that a lot of people really sleep on because you know Chainsaw Man, he's cutting heads off, and Kobeni doing all this stuff, blah blah blah, all these things that are going on. But I'm like, guys. Why can't Denji just find like a regular girl? Mm -hmm. Somebody he doesn't whether or not he wants to be lovers with her or be like date her or whatever. He had and then even in season in part two, he found one. Now you'd have took her away. Took her away. And then he finds her again. The war devil takes her away. He he can never find intimacy. He literally never can. And and people say, no, he has. That that's not intimacy. That's no, toxicity that's right there. That's that's straight toxicity. That's the stuff you see on reality shows. What that's, what Makama that's, does. Say. That's gaslighting. That's gas taking lighting. advantage. Mm. Yeah. And, and 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 I'm just like, I wonder at some point because I think at, right now I can't see him and Asa being together, right? Because of everything that's happening. But I'm like, are they going to introduce another person? Is he going to find power, like whatever power is? Because she said, "Hey, find me again." Is she going to find power? Is he going to find power? Because that could be so interesting. But there's so much. I really slept on Chainsaw Man in terms of how intricate of a story it is and all the themes about it. I really did. And that's and that's why um I I really like animes like that like they I think they do so well because they cater to such a wide variety of the audience because on on face value it could just be guy kills demons and whatnot. Oh, gore for for the, how I think J Rob calls it the meatheads. Mm -hmm. Like you just want to see somebody good evil fight go. Sure, but for others, it's like like how you said. You're seeing it from can he just find intimacy? Can he just find a partner? Can he just find happiness? And that's what makes anime great. Like just all those different levels and complexities of stories. And that's why I say everybody needs to watch Oblivion Battery because it is not a sports anime. Mm -hmm. It's literally a slice of life with sports. It just, it just it just has like a sports coding on it. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's all it is. So yeah, there's so many like that. Whether that's Michelle Gutensei, like his search, like he legitimately was like, look, I got a second chance at life. Yeah, I know I got all this. There's a man god. There's all these fights. There's this world building, whatever. Just to do trying to like he. Not many people get a second chance. Like, I know we throw that word around, but not really many people get a second chance at living again. And he doesn't know how to do it because he's never done it. And now mm -hmm. he's he's figuring it out, and that's all it is. Whether or not, even like Slime. My boy, my, even Slime, I understand it's, it's sometimes very campy. Sometimes it can get very dark. But in the end, my guy just like, I just want a place to like have fun and be well with. And just him trying to do that alone, he finds out, oh, now I got these goblins. I got to take care of them. I got to start interacting with other nations. Oh, my God. The Season two had a literal crusade. There was a literal crusade about to happen to them, and they stopped that. 
then it's it, there's all these things. So don't, like I, I think I said this to you one of these times. Anime always has something that will have you coming back and mm-hmm. for everyone. So I can't wait. I mean, we finally get a break. I know we got slime coming, but slime, they're doing a festival. So, you know, we got some time to just kind of chill until ReZero comes and ReZero every Tuesday. I will be sitting there with y'all talking. I'm like, what the fuck did, did that Subaru, that entire action mean? And then when Rem comes back, I'm like, shut the fuck up. Rem's back. <laughs> Rem's back. Rem's back. No, I'm, I'm way. I'm like I said. I, I'm a lot of anime only. I need Tower of God too to, to come out because I need I, I I need I need a get back. I I, I just I need I, a get I think back. That's one of the best plot twists in anime I've ever. Seen. I saw that. I I didn't even like. I never saw it coming. Like you, like you see the the clip of Miles on the pod when you guys are talking about Goku giving the sense of being, and he throws his headphones. Yeah, I threw my headphones so hard, I, I broke it. I, I was shocked. And then and she stands she, up off the chair. And she just, I'm like, like it was such a, it was such a graceful push. Like it, it was just. And then he just turns around and looks at her as as he's falling. And my favorite part about that is that it was so absurd. That even the characters, when she tells them what happened, even all of them were like, <laughs> You tell me he died? We've been watching this man shock us for 12, 13 episodes, and you tell me he's dead? Like his boy, his boy was like, I don't fucking believe you. Yeah. And the minute I see it, the minute you showcase any weakness at all, I'm coming for you. And then that cackle that she has when she's in her room, Just, that wow. evil ass cackle, I'm like, I, I wanted. I wish I knew Riddell because I, I was like Riddell. Tell me Bond gets his get back on that bitch. <laughs> tell me because I'm never. There's a few people like you know. I obviously like look, look look. I hate Mineta. Let's keep it a stack. I hate Mineta, right? But like, I you I agree. Mineta doesn't hold a candle to to yeah. that. I don't even want to say her name. I want to say her <laughs> name. <laughs> I want to say her name, Santo. The same way you don't want to say he should, he should, not, should not be named in, in Mushoku Tensei. I don't want to say her name. She doesn't deserve to be mentioned or anything like that. Diabolical. I'm going to see her on screen. Every time I see her on screen, I'm going I'm to look at her like Megan Thee Stallion looked at Miley Cyrus <laughs> doing that one award. It's just like... I might flip off my TV. That's how mad I am. But we we can't we can't keep talking. It's been two hours. Two There's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. But uh, see you guys next time. I don't know when next time is, but we'll see you guys next time. Um, don't worry. I'll keep you guys abreast of if we're doing something. If we're going to do this for another series. If not, we'll see you guys the next time Mushoku Tensei drops an episode. Maybe we'll we'll come back for the OVA. We'll definitely come back for the OVA. I'm gonna be disgusting. Just not yeah, yeah. Bro, be disgusting. <laughs> Be disgusting. I'll drop some lore. We'll talk shit on Eris because I'm with you, man. Santo, I know the whole story, and I still don't fucking like her. I know the whole story. She trash. Trifling. (laughs) Trifling. All right, guys. We will see you guys next time. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Bye, guys.